You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. It is four minutes after 12 bells and we're here at the Viper Room live. Slash is going to be joining us in a little bit. But I thought um, I would say where I've been for the last uh, three months. I don't want to be like the elephant in the room and just like make out nothing's happening. So I brought along uh, a doctor, Dr. Gang, from uh are you from cedars or are you uh yes our practice is affiliated with cedars yeah but actually uh, we're the cardiovascular medical group uh, yeah of beverly hills but we uh admit our patients to cedar sinai and yeah. that's where i teach and that's where i do the procedures that i do at cedars you're the electrician of a yes, heart right that's right there's two people a plumber and electrician right is that right, or is there more? Yes, and you've uh, what? That's a major a part of cardiology these days. The yeah. plumbers, the people who take care of the blood flow, the valves, the coronary arteries, and those who take care of the heart rhythm, which is more my domain. But yeah. we're all cardiologists by training. Yeah. So, three months ago, maybe, well, first of all, three months and three weeks, something like that, I got this, I was going to start, the next day, doing the one day a week, you know, I, I was doing five days a week, and I was moving it to one day a week, a Friday. The day before I was going to come in on the Friday, I'm out in Malibu with my buddy Richard, and we're at Nobu, and all of a sudden my face started feeling all wonky. I'm like, that's weird, what, what's going on? Anyway, an hour later, I'm back uh, in his house, and I'm like, did my face look funny to you? He said, yeah, it looks uh, like it's dead on one side. So I panic, I'm thinking I'm having a stroke. So long story short, uh, we called a, a, a paramedic, I went, went to St. John's Hospital and uh, did all the checks, kept me there overnight, and my buddy Richard stayed with me, God bless him. And uh, it turned out to be this thing called Bell's Palsy. I had no idea what that meant, you know, other than... You know, when I smiled, I looked like Popeye. And I looked in like this. <laughs> so that's the hence why I couldn't come in the radio. So three weeks later, it started getting a little better. And I was ready to come back on. The night before I came back on, was, which was funny enough, Friday the 13th in September. I went to bed about 11 o'clock. Woke up at two o'clock with a pain in my chest, like not normal pain. And I said, uh, what the hell's going on? Anyway, I drove myself to uh, CVC in, in uh, Beverly Hills to get some aspirin. I heard that aspirin's, for some reason I remembered that. I had some aspirin, but they were from 2000, the year 2000. So I figured they've lost their potency. I don't know if that was true. Anyway. I go there and I, I, it was dead. It's like three in the morning and I'm the lady pharmacist. I said, uh, um, you've got any, uh, what's good aspirin for heart attacks? She said, I would try these. She, she said, but you might want to go to the hospital as well. I said, all right. So I drove myself to Cedars. I went in, checked myself in. They did the EKG. They wasn't smiling. Then they took me to that thing. What's that thing when you sit in the donut and the dye is inside you? Yes, you went to the cardiac cath lab, catheterization laboratory. Yeah. And uh, from there, they just took me up to, uh, what's the other gaff? What's the other place called? So maybe you went elsewhere first. So you may have had a, a CT scan or some other test first, and then you went to the cardiac cath lab. Yeah, the cath lab is cath where they lab do... is where they do the angiogram. Yeah. And where they uh, opened uh, a vessel that had closed in your heart. Yeah. One of the blood vessels that supplies nutrition and blood to your heart, when it closes, that's what defines a heart attack. Yeah. And they opened it in time and successfully, and you're here to tell the tale. I had two... I've got two stents, You've right? You've got two stents. That's right. Stents are those... Uh, buttresses metallic uh, scaffolding that they put in the heart to keep the walls open after yeah. they after they open up the closure so i had a heart attack you did and and i i, I kept hearing you had a 90 percent blockage yes uh uh do you say that to everyone though 
No, it depends on, of course, how much is blocked and what the patient uh, uh, is experiencing, yeah. what the blood tests show, what the electrocardiogram shows, the EKG shows. Yeah. You met the criteria for a true bona fide heart attack. They opened up the vessel. In a sense, they aborted the, uh, the, the, the large portion of the heart attack. The early portion you did have. You did form a scar. So, so that they, you damages know, your heart? Yes. There's an old adage in cardiology, time is muscle. The earlier you get to it, the earlier you get to a hospital, yeah. the earlier they get to the artery, the less muscle is destroyed or damaged. In your case, they, uh, they uh, averted a larger heart attack by being uh, efficient and getting to your heart and opening up. But there was a residual scar. Yeah. Uh, and I think I had a heart attack a week beforehand and didn't well, know it. The Bell's palsy that you described is not, is a coincidence. No, no, no. That's a total coincidence. I'm, I'm yes. talking about in between all that. Yeah. I went walking once and yeah. my heart started hurting. Yes. My chest started hurting. Yeah. This was prior to the heart attack. So you're a musician. The term crescendo might appeal to you. Yeah. Uh, so there is such a term as crescendo angina where people first feel uh, the angina. chest discomfort. Angina. Uh, uh, I thought you said vangina. <laughs> um and they have a discomfort, and then it uh, kind of occurs again or becomes more severe, sort of in a crescendo pattern. Yeah. And then it culminates in a true heart attack. Yeah. So you may have had the beginning of an unstable or crescendo pattern yeah. a week before. Yeah. So yeah. hence, after having a heart attack, I didn't come in the next day. And I've actually been trying to recover for the last three months, and I've had a slow recovery it's it's been a bit of a nightmare you know um because i think my heart was working at 30 percent mm -hmm. i don't know if it's come up a little bit since then that's to be determined and yeah. should be followed yes yeah so you know that coupled with the medication i've got i'm on like eight nine medication and, and i'm getting real weird reactions dizzy and just out of my mind I can't believe right now I'm not having a panic attack because normally when I'm around like stuff that's happening, I, that's when I get it. It's a weird feeling that comes over me. Well, you know, we chatted a little bit before we went on the air. And yeah. some of the things that you're exhibiting may well be side effects of the medications. And the good news there is that we can make them go away by adjusting your medications, taking them away, replacing them. You may not need nearly as much now as you did three months ago. Yeah. So there's... There's lots of room for major improvement. Yeah. Well, Dr. Gang, you're a sweet man. You're Thank a good you. bloke. I really, I really. Thank uh, you. Thank when you. I saw you in Cedars, when I was, had my legs up in the air the next day, I, I was like, you know, I thought you were a good dude. Thank you. Play, and and you look well. I haven't seen you in a little while. Yeah. You look much better than when I saw you last a, a month or two ago. You oh, look well. Congratulations. Okay being back to work back in your milieu back in the studio so far so yeah. good yes i think yes um we're gonna play uh tom petty song when we come back we're gonna have slash on the box see you in a minute 